My name is Karen Seaman and I am a published author and a book editor and a book reviewer. I own my own company here in my home in Deerfield, Wisconsin. My background is in newspaper journalism. I have a journalism degree from UW-Madison and I um, work for a whole series of small newspapers in Wisconsin, uh, but the last newspaper I worked for before I started my company, Ink Spots, was the Capital Times in Madison. I am working right now on a book for the Wisconsin Historical Society Press, and this book is about Wisconsin's Indian boarding schools. This was federal policy. Indian children were taken away from their families and sent to boarding schools to be educated um, but the underlying real reason was to assimilate them into white culture. What I'm doing right now, I'm in the process of researching the book right now, and what it's involving is going, uh, first of all, to the Wisconsin Historical Society, which is a, a tremendous uh, resource and archive. There are books, there are primary sources like the, the um, school records. There are also secondary sources, which are books that, that people have written. Um, there are lots of photos, lots and lots and lots of photos. Um, so I'm going and culling everything that I can find at the Historical Society. I have also worked through WorldCat. Somebody in Arizona had done, put together a whole booklet of Indian school census records. And it's all listing kids who were in school at boarding schools in the 1910, 1910, 1920, and 1930. It lists their name and their age and where they were from and what school they were going to, which is huge. A lot of these schools were run, operated via contracts with the Lutheran Church and the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church has records, the Lutheran Church has records, the Historical Society, the National Archives has records. But the most important piece of all this, this that's all background, the records, but the most important piece of this is to work with the individual Indian tribes themselves because they have, they have collected the stories themselves too. I, I've sat and watched um, video recordings of oral, of, of them doing oral histories with people, and they've graciously shared some of those with me. Um, I've done in-person interviews with, with um, elderly tribal members who attended boarding schools, you know, back in the 1930s and 1940s. So it, it's really gathering and gathering and gathering and gathering pieces of information. And then at some point, this is the hard part, is to sit down. I need to sit down and figure out how to put it all together. I need to create a database for everything that I have so far. And also, ultimately, this becomes my bibliography, um, all my citations, um, what I have and where it came from. And it's just a really important part of the process. I, I'm not to the point of writing yet. I'm, I'm probably a good six months away from writing. So what I have here, for instance, this big packet, is a, this is all census records that I found on WorldCat. And so I am going to enter all this. And it's interesting, this is not necessarily uh, anything that I couldn't have found out on my own. Literally this person, um, Richard Haithcock is his name, back in 2009 went through Ancestry.com. Um, there's all census records in there. It's not anything that's copywritten. Um, but it would, this just saved me an awful lot of time. What I will do uh, when I get further into the process is see if I can contact him and just let him know that, just to acknowledge him and to thank him, to say, okay, thank you very much for putting all this together and I appreciate that I'm able to use your resource. And he'll end up being acknowledged in, you know, there's always a, an acknowledgement section in a book. So I'm putting in here the title, the author, if it's a book, the ISBN, which is um, a number that any published book gets. Um, you'll see it on the front cover of a book. Um, and then the source, where I got it from. Um, and then the date, date received, I guess is the best word. I'm going to put permission, permission granted. And ultimately this will be a column that will say yes or no. I've got permission granted here to do this. It's very, very important to know what you need permission for any kind of a book or an article where you're pulling information from somebody else's work. I had to get written permissions, letters signed from all of the people who gave me information for this book. 
and the most the the biggest thing is um, pictures. The uh, Wisconsin Historical Society has lots of pictures. This picture, for instance, the main picture came from the National Museum of the American Indian, and we actually had to pay a permissions fee to them. And then we had to credit them on the side of the picture inside the book. So this is called Reservation and Indian Boarding School Students, 1930 to 1910. So ultimately, yes, I will see if I can contact this gentleman and make sure he's okay, you know, with me using this. One of the things that I have found working on this book is using technology more and more of what I do is not a photocopy like this, but it, it is all digital. When I wrote the Electa Quinney book, um, you will see this is all photocopies, pages and pages and pages and pages of paper. And this is paper from the State Historical Society. This is paper from Indian tribal libraries from all over the place. Um, what I have in my hand right now is probably the neatest thing that I found. Um, these are actually letters from letters to Electa Quinney from her friends and her son. She had a son who died in the Civil War and her son, other son who survived um, saved those letters. So now what I'm doing is I go with my zip drive and I put it into the copy machine or into the microfilm machine or whatever I'm looking at that day and I'm copying pages onto my zip drive and then I come home and I put it into my computer. I've got scanned pictures, I've got reports from school superintendents, I've got um, some video that I, I transferred, I literally sat in, did an audio recording of some video. I've got some handwritten notes that I wrote um, that I scanned in after I talked to somebody on the phone, a dissertation, lots of dissertations that have been written on the Wisconsin boarding schools, um, copies of books, for this book and also for the Electa Quinney book, going on to Google Books. Um, there are lots and lots of old books. You need to know a lot more background than may actually come out in your book. Um, so if you're writing fiction, for instance, you need to know your main characters, their whole life story, where they grew up, what they did for their whole life until they got to this point to be a character in a book. And sometimes the uh, in a fiction book, their story might, it might cover, you know, two weeks of their life or a month of their life in a fiction book, but you need to know the whole picture. And the same thing when you're writing nonfiction is that you need to know all the backstory about what you're writing about. One of my very first assignments um, with the Electa Quinney book and also now with this book is to read and read and read and read and read.